Hello chess friends and welcome to you out of chess channel and welcome back to the computer blitz chess championship in 2022 so we have reached now the finals and in the finals we have a beautiful and brutal match game between the stockfish engine and the dragon engine and it becomes more and more clear that the dragon engine is becoming the second best engine in the world because we used to see Lila C0 in many of these top finals but now it's a different story now the dragon engine is simply the second best engine in the world so uh, I've sorted out now one one great game from the semi-finals uh, in between stockfish against uh, ruby chess and uh, before of course this final starts i wanted to cover m many of these beautiful and tactical games in the game it's in the knight of sicilian in an open amsterdam variation of the knight of sicilian be prepared this is again a brutal brutal top engine game so uh here e4 played by stockfish c5 by ruby knight to f3 d6 d4 c takes d4 uh, knight takes d4 knight to f6 knight to c3 and f remove a6 we have reached now the knight of Sicilian and okay you could play plenty things of course you can play bishop to g5 you can go into the English attack uh, with the move f3 but here stockfish uh, pre-arranged line was the move f4 which is now the so-called Amsterdam variation and the idea is clear we want to play bishop to e2 bishop to e3 then to play g4 g5 even h4 h5 if the position allows it we want to have simply a beautiful expansion on the queen side so uh, okay it's a clear idea but the problem I think always in this particular particular lines is that you're vulnerable a little bit here um on dark squash your opponent could try maybe something like bishop to c5 queen to b6 so uh, the problem is i think this week f2 square f2 is the main target here of black so here in the continuation we have e5 which is the best line here for black what you should not do uh, from white's perspective is to play f takes e5 you should not do that because after d takes e5 i think that uh, black is taking over here first of all you lose the tempo with your knight and then the problem is the bishop and the queen are coming very very active into the game bishop to c5 queen to b6 could happen knight to g4 could happen so uh, all of these pieces are simply used in order to attack your weakness on f2 as i said this is something that you should always uh, uh, be careful about uh, about the square f2 so here in the continuation that's why knight to f3 what black now should not do is this one e takes f4 comes with the tempo here for white white is getting with the bishop very very active into the game so that's why here from black's perspective the best way is simply to keep the tension in the center of the board wait here a little bit in the center so no one wants to take here in the center that's now the main main goal here for both sides so knight to f3 uh here knight for b to d7 was played by ruby we have a4 uh prophylactic move by stockfish not allowing uh here some b5 expansions on the queen side so we have now d5 and that was now the last pre-arranged move by the organizer because the d5 move is actually a wild gambit line and uh, this gambit line is not so good if white knows what uh, what white is doing because the main line would be something like queen to c7 bishop to e7 kingside castling and black is doing perfectly fine but it could be maybe surprised sometimes with the move d5 uh here stockfish accepts the challenge plays now knight to d5 simply grabs the pawn in the center of the board we have now this idea bishop to c5 this move d5 is actually a, a line in which black is trying to get use of this dark square problems of white so after move bishop to c5 we have f takes e5 and now knight to e4 and here comes the tricky part of this opening line and that's exactly why i think that even in um, uh, human chess i think you could reach maybe this line because there are many many games in the database in this particular line and the, from this point on i think that white should know what white is doing here because what you should not do and uh, in the beginning it seems like a normal idea is to move a, a bishop to e3 it seems so that this moving is helping you out but actually it's not so good to play this line because after uh, bishop to e3 knight to e3 queen to b6 is happening and uh, you can maybe cover yourself again with the move queen to d4 but the problem is now queen takes d4 knight to d4 and now knight to e5 happens and uh, i think that uh, black has solved now all of the positional problems the, the, the this is now i think a drawish endgame in which the material is equal uh, no one has a decisive advantage here i think from this point on uh white didn't gain anything so let's go back now to the critical moment after move knight to e4 it's obvious that you're vulnerable here around the square f2 but what you should do and it's really wild you should allow your opponent this fork so that's why here stockfish played a brutal brutal move bishop to d3 and uh, here the ruby chess engine accepts the challenge plays knight to f2 but now 
comes the standard bishop to g5 and from this point on um white um uh, a counter attacks here and black has now several options what to uh, what to do you could maybe try here the move f6 this wasn't played in the game but f6 is not good because after e takes f6 okay you could maybe have now time to take out the queen knight to d1 happens but now comes the stunner of course f takes g7 comes with a double attack against the queen but also against the rook even if you try queen to g5 as we said we simply pray uh here um, uh, g takes h8 uh the promotion and then afterwards we can take out the queen so uh here white uh after move uh, knight to d1 as we said um, you could maybe try here to move rook to g8 but the problem is again this one white doesn't have to even take out the queen that's not the point here we can even take king to d1 and again the queen is hanging you can maybe try to escape with the queen but now bishop to d2 here you could try queen to d8 but now rook to e1 happens and again you have to have to move the king somewhere you can maybe try uh king to f7 but now you see knight to g5 maybe you can trick uh, take out the pawn but now knight to e6 for instance is also winning the game so there are many sidelines i didn't really want to complicate things too much but every line is basically winning uh here for white i wanted to show you how uh white can even delay the situation doesn't have to even take out the queen immediately so after move bishop to d3 as we said knight to f2 and then bishop to g5 was played f6 we have seen it's not a good choice you could also try maybe knight to d1 but after bishop to d uh, bishop to d8 uh, sorry i have some troubles king to d8 to here uh, uh, king to d1 the problem is i think again uh, the activity of white pieces so black could maybe get destroyed with the move b4 c4 so also we can uh we have to agree uh it's a winning uh, end game i think for white because of this extra pawn rook to e1 could happen supporting simply the pawn bishop to f5 so again many many possibilities uh here for white so that's why i have move bishop to g5 here queen to a5 was played by uh, this uh, engine ruby we have now queen to d2 and what you could do again from black perspective is to play queen to, uh, queen takes d2 but that's exactly not good again for black king takes d2 uh, you could maybe take out the rook but now with knight to c7 we have also here the possibility of a fork you're uh, forced to play king to f8 and now after move knight to a, uh, uh, knight to a8 again uh, we have reached now this position okay black can escape but now uh, bishop to e3 uh, maybe knight takes d3 c takes d3 maybe with some more uh, pieces traded off the game becomes more and more simplified but again we have to agree this is the winning end game for white because of this extra pawn rook to c8 will happen uh, rook to c7 could uh, be also played so uh, knight to c7 is an opportunity so uh, white is also getting this knight into the game and simply continues the game with an extra pawn so that's why after move queen to d2 this is not what you want to get so that's why here knight takes d3 you cannot take of course with the queen because of this uh, very annoying pin by the queen so that's why c takes d3 and now bishop to f2 we have king to f2 and now queen to d5 and okay we have reached now this sort of middle game slash end game stage in which uh, white is up a whole pawn again but the problem is again um this uh, king the, the, this endangered king on f2 the king is vulnerable of course to some attacks by by black but i would sort out a very very important problem here of blacks black has now the lack of development problem because uh, here the bishop would of course love to come into the game the problem is now in order to make that happen you have to move your knight somewhere if you do that if you play something like knight to c5 knight to b6 okay wherever you want to play the problem is now that the, the knight gets simply too far away from the action the knight gets simply do too much deflected uh, from the king side and that's exactly what uh, stockfish notices here stockfish notices that it could attack uh, simply the king here uh, even if the king stays in the center of the board and even if um, uh, black plays king side castling the king will simply get attacked by the huge huge activity that stockfish is preparing now so stockfish plays now first of all rook to e1 protecting now the e4 e5 pawn but not that stockfish is only protecting the pawn stockfish is also trying to get the rook on e4 where stockfish could create really some madness on the fourth rank so here we have uh king king side casting we have rook to e4 we have queen to e6 now rook to e1 you see stockfish is first regrouping stockfish is building a nice attacking setup uh includes all of the pieces in the attack that's really really most important principle of attacking chess 
getting the pieces on the best squares using all of the pieces in the attack it's a crucial crucial uh tactical element really really uh wild stuff will happen now because when you uh, when you see stockfish building such a brutal uh setup like this that you know that something special is going to happen so here b5 and okay you're trying as i said to get the bishop into the game uh you're trying here maybe even after something like a takes b5 a takes b5 then also this rook could come into the game uh through the sixth rank but that's exactly what stockfish not allowing stockfish continues to pressure play simply rook to d4 and look here we have uh b takes a4 it doesn't matter uh because uh, it's simply one pawn nothing dramatically changed on the queen side because on the queen side actually nothing is happening uh the only the the whole game is now uh simply transposing into the king side attack here stockfish plays of course rook to d6 and now the queen has to play on a2 really really an unnatural score for the queen the queen is all also out of game and now stockfish used at this moment says okay your queen is out your rook is out your bishop is out of game the knight is also too far away from the action so that's why stockfish plays now a brutal move we have now bishop to h6 and you could try maybe something like rook to e8 uh, here to escape but now with queen to g5 you could maybe try g6 but the problem is now this move e6 e6 is winning the game immediately f takes e6 then we have rook to e6 the problem is now even if you take rook takes e6 then queen to d8 is simply the way uh, winning the game you can maybe cover yourself but now uh here this uh this is of course a checkmate immediately you could cover also with the knight but now queen takes f8 is winning the game so you see you cannot uh, escape from this attack uh, you have to take out the bishop here so that's why g takes h6 was played but now rook to h6 we have uh, king to h8 here this uh, ruby chess engine is trying maybe to play rook to g8 rook to g7 to cover somehow but now stockfish simply includes this other rook into the game really really a uh, brutal attack by the fish we have f6 and now e takes f6 we have rook to f6 but now rook to uh, uh rook to uh, e7 if you play of course rook takes h6 then you get checkmated uh we have queen to h6 you can maybe cover of course this uh square uh, g7 but you can never uh, cover the h7 square you can maybe try some perpetuals uh but here after knight to d2 you don't have any more checks so whatever you do it's game over with the move knight to f6 you cannot cover yourself because if you do that then you get checkmated on g7 so you cannot protect as i said both both squares so here after move rook to e7 uh we have rook to f7 we have rook to e6 queen to e6 had to be played because whatever you do again the queen is getting into the game you get this check uh, the knight is getting into the game so uh, there is some simply not so many things that you can do as i said uh, the problem was the lack of development that that's something that you should notice when you're attacking your opponent uh, uh, when you see that he's not getting his pieces into the game then it's even time to sacrifice some pieces if necessary because now uh, the ruby engine had to sacrifice the queen for for the rook rook takes e6 we have knight to f8 and now we have a check uh, here rook take rook to f6 we have bishop to e6 rook takes f7 and now bishop to f7 we have reached now a new position in which okay the black has the rook and the minor piece for the queen but uh, we have first of all to notice here this is a pass pawn uh, the king is uh, endangered here uh, the king can always be attacked so it's a completely completely winning endgame here for white so here knight to g5 was played we have rook to e8 knight to e4 uh, stockfish is trying this knight to f6 idea we have queen to uh, c7 attacking uh, the knight we have bishop to sorry my screen just moved okay we have bishop to e6 we have queen to g3 a check we have queen to h4 bishop to b3 and now king to g1 first securing the king we have rook to f8 and now queen to g5 what leave us uh, stop uh, sorry uh, what stockfish is trying to do is of course get use of this dark square attacks uh, dark squares are now crucial in order to uh, attack black's king maybe uh, you can also try some ideas like h4 h5 h6 uh, getting used maybe of the h5 uh, 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 getting use uh, of this h pawn because if that happens if you maybe get your pawn on h6 then you can also deliver some checkmates on g7 so that's why here a5 we have now immediately this idea h4 we have rook to g8 but now again queen to e7 attacking the knight we have rook to g7 again a new check you can cover yourself only with the bishop but now uh here comes the stunner knight to d6 there are now uh, many many ideas even knight to f5 uh, so we have now h5 knight to f5 we have rook to h7 
queen to uh, e8 a3 we have b takes a3 rook to f7 and now knight to h6 we have the fork uh here knight to f6 was played knight takes uh, f7 uh here king to g7 so from this point on it's completely completely winning we have queen to uh, b5 bishop to f7 and now uh Stoffer simply takes out this pawn play simply further with the pawn push the pawn further queen to g5 so it's obviously winning game here but let's see now what happens Stockfish pushed the pawn further we have bishop to c6 uh, d4 uh, first knight to f3 g takes f3 we have now new check okay Stockfish promoted to a new queen and here after queen to a5 it was a checkmate so <clears throat> really really great stuff uh, you see this line uh, with the move d5 can be a surprise element in the Sicilian, in the Knight of Sicilian, but uh, you should not be vulnerable. Uh, you should not be scared when that happens. Let's go back. Uh, after move d5, simply taking out bishop to c5. Uh, but now, as we said, f takes e5, knight takes e4, and now bishop to d3, allowing your opponent here uh, to fork you on f2. But now, with the move bishop to g5, you have beautiful, beautiful counter elements. So, I hope that you enjoyed the game. Really, really wild stuff. So, as I said, uh, now we have the finals between Stockfish against the Dragon Engine. It will be a beautiful, beautiful match, I think, for sure. Stockfish is, of course, the top favorite. Stockfish will probably uh win a new a new event in to compute in the computer chess world but uh, i wanted to cover of course plenty of these games because they're really really beautiful with some sharp and tactical elements so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game i really enjoyed it a lot if you want to see more games uh like this check out my coverage of the computer chess championships and also of some tcec competitions uh, that we have covered so far here's the link of our whole playlist and if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and chess is the best, of course.